So, it's been a long time since I gave this thing any love. I've been driving around for a couple years now. It's not a bad trailer. It does everything I want it to do. Um, it's rated to tow everything I need to tow. There's just a couple things wrong with it. I'm going to see if I can fix them. I did the math. This is going to be about 500 bucks in materials, which is cheaper than buying a new one. Like just trading this one up. It is going to be way more labor intensive, and that should be obvious. Because, uh, well, let's put it this way. Buying a new trailer involves showing up and signing some papers. Um, modifying this one is going to involve some work, but it's all welding. I'll go over it step by step. Everything I'm going to do. First off, these fenders. There's a lot of times where I wish they weren't there. Just temporarily. So I'm going to make these removable. Second thing. These ramps are way too long. Or too short. Way too short. Way, way, way too short. Whenever I go to drive a tractor up with a backhoe, the front tires start up the ramps and they get to right about here and then the backhoe hits and then it's just stuck. Uh, I can't get it up off. If I And I know what you're thinking. Well, and I'm going to imagine the comments about why don't you just drop the bucket down and pick the front tires up. I'm like, well that really doesn't help me when I'm hung up on the dirt back there. So I did some measuring and I want to make these a couple, maybe two feet longer, maybe a little more. We'll go over how I want to do that. I've been thinking about this forever, by the way. Oh, and the other thing that's annoying. Look at that gap. Look at that gap. This bar is so bent that you can't slide the ramp's the way, and I love the fact that I can slide them almost to the middle. Um, there's a lot I really like about this trailer too. Uh, I added all the D-rings. I love D-rings. I'm not a big fan of stake pockets, even though this trailer does have a couple of them. Uh, I just really like the D-rings. I love my, especially like, you know, those guys up front. I added the little wing rings. Uh, I don't know if you can see. There's one right there. There's actually one where that strap's attached to. There's one there and one there. Um, they're just, I think they're a thousand pound. Bought them on Amazon, but they're they're nice for towing, hooking, slashing down the four wheelers. Um, I'm gonna redo some of this up front. I'm not sure if I'm keeping that box or not. I do need something to store my chains in. This box is most likely gonna stay, along with the winch. Uh, I might do something to kind of protect it from the weather a little bit. But these boards under here, or in this neck, are rotted solid. And then there's the big thing. And this is the big thing. This trailer is too short. From tip to tail. Now, I bought it as a package deal with a tractor. Now, I used to always put the tractor, like put the bucket right up against the front front there, right up against the front of it. And that worked well. No problems, no issues. And then I put teeth on the bucket. Now, the teeth are only like that long. But whenever I slid those teeth up against, all of a sudden, whoosh, 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 I couldn't do 40 mile an hour I it's too short it was too short the day I bought it so we're gonna make this into a 20 footer I have a couple different ideas on how I want to do that um, I know I know what I am gonna do though is I am going to split it right there and probably right there. Split it and lengthen it here and lengthen it there. All these boards are going to have to come off. I'm just not sure and I want to decrease this approach angle just a little bit. Um, I checked some other trailers it's supposed to be like I think like three degrees and this one's at seven. 
which I know doesn't sound crazy, but I'd like to be able to put cars on here too. I do have another trailer for nice cars, but I want one for, you know, with the winch for pulling them out of a field because that's what I'd like to do for a long time. And we're going to do some other stuff to clean it up. But, all right, first job first, I'm going to get these ramps off, which involves sliding this bar out, which they are only held on by that bolt. So I should be able to fold them both down, pull these bars out, and get on with it. All right, here's the getting on. Getting her on. Now let's see if we can get it the whole way out through the side. Good luck. Why? Well, oh, on your mission. Hey, on. Yeah. When you come back, uh, when you come back, I'll show you and the viewers how bent this bar truly is. Holy shit! Wow. What was that? That bar was the one that held up your um your. Ramps. Ramps. Yep. Wow. Yep. New one. It's over there. Wow. No wonder. New bar. Yay. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna be D T uh, D. Wait. D F T D. Done for the day. So, I've been sitting here contemplating. And thinking and thinking and contemplating and wondering and thinking and contemplating that well first off that piece of channel I got under that's four inch channel and the reason I'm using four inch channels because to load the tractor I always set the ramps down on four by four wooden blocks which I know according to math is uh, actually three and a half by three and a half so if I do four 
should be good. And then I laid this piece on to get an idea of how long it would be. And that's where I screwed up because if I made it this long, it would be three inches up from this side, so that would actually change this tilt and this angle. If I measure from here to where on a straight line along the bottom, where it touches on the ground is roughly two feet. So I need to add two feet to get that angle right there. Two feet to the three inch. And I'm also going to add a little foot to the end of it. But that's good news because the one thing I was kind of concerned about was the height of my door. Please don't mind the strobes. My kids were playing with my light. Um, the height of my door is 10 feet. So I measured off the trailer because originally I was going to add three feet to each one. And I measured off the trailer to see what would fit through the door with the ramps folded up. And it looks like 32 inches is a nice comfortable zone where if I you know, hit a bump or something, or let's say I ran over a three inch piece of steel or something, the trailer wouldn't hit the door frame. I would still have about, you know, roughly a three or uh, uh, five or six inch gap, which is, you know, breathable for me. So, it looks like about two feet is going to be the magic number. I might stretch it out just a little bit, just because, um, you know, go big or go home. Like, I got the room to spare. But like I said, I want to add like a little bit of either a piece of angle or a flat plate so that you're not, whenever you're climbing up on to the trailer, you're not just hitting this three inch ledge and going up. Or the other idea I'm toying with is actually taking and trimming the angle to a point and then laying a plate over top of that. I don't know what I would like to, I might look at some pictures of some trailers for a few minutes for some inspiration, but that's where I'm at. <clears throat> and the pipe I bought <coughs> is not the same diameter as the old pipe. And I'm contemplating if that is going to bother anything. <coughs> to give you an example of how much difference it is, if I can, oh, hold on, I can do it with this one. One-handed. I mean, there's like a good three-eighths, half-inch diameter difference. <clears throat> I'll actually measure it out. It's closer to three-eighths. I shouldn't say half-inch. Because this one is roughly an inch, five-eighths outside. And this one is just shy of two inches. So I'm contemplating if that bothers me enough to change the pipe. The thing I'm worried about is too much rattle. But then again, i got to remember, it's a leaf-sprung trailer. With these hanging off the back end, so rattles are going to happen. I'm also going to change, going to do a little modification to these guys. I like the chain idea because then it gives me an infinitely adjustable tilt. Like if I have something long, I load up, and I want the ramps to just lean back just a little bit. Uh, I can just move it a couple links back. But, and it's a big but. Um, there's no way there to secure the chain actually like if I hit a good bounce and the chain and it came loose and the chain came up then it would just slide right out so I'm going to come up with some sort of bar or latch something so that the chain can't come up I just haven't figured out what that's going to look like either but here we go
That's why they give you two blades, huh? All right, you guys see me cut that end piece out. Uh, the reason I cut it out is because it was welded to the bottom, I guess so your tires rolled up a little better or something. But since it's no longer the end of the ramp, I want to move it up to the top like the rest of these. And I haven't 100% figured out what I'm going to do with the new bottom, but I have an idea. We'll see if it changes. I'm not going to give it away yet. But, as you can see, I have ground all the paint back and put a good bevel on. And I'm going to show you in a few minutes, once I chop up a piece or two of steel, how, um, how I'm going to clamp it up. Alright, let's do this. So this is true of like any new milled steel, especially structural steel, you can see. I hope you can see. I'm sorry, if I pointed it at you, you'd be able to see how messed up this end is. The ends, unless it's a cut end, usually aren't square. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and square it up by cutting off just a tip bit and a chop saw. Now, had that not been a hard blade basically like a miter saw like a regular wood saw I probably would have ooh I might have to take a little bit more there's a bubble right there yeah we're gonna take a little bit more let's bring it down but you get the idea I'm gonna have to take a couple more inches off let's make sure you square your end if it was a um, what I call a grinding style chop saw I probably would have moved it a little further past the edge because you know you don't want your saw blade to walk and then you have even more of an angle but yeah I'm gonna take another cut and then I'm gonna mark it and then actually cut it well there you go that's about what I got so far I'm still working out a couple of the finer points like trimming them edges down how I want to do that haven't quite figured it out yet but uh, here's the hoping uh, I'll come up with an idea but in the meantime I got a little more steel to cut and I still got that ramp to do so we'll get going on it I'm just leaving it tacked in for right now because it might change my mind you never know you know okay let you know how it goes. Well, here was my problem the last two days. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I knew I'd lengthen them with, through a three inch angle, but then how I was going to do the edge and everything else. And then I bought the wrong size pipe that was the wrong size. I got the right size actually on the trailer. Uh, test fit it. But uh, that was another 40 some bucks. But. Once the creative juices got flowing, and I actually got into it, I kind of went ahead and, uh, well, the first one's done. D-U-N-N. -N. And I'll show you how I did it. And maybe without redoing a lot, because that's what I would kind of do. I would do something, take a step back, do something, take a step back. But it's gusseted. Right about here was where the cut was. Well, actually, not the cut, but where the old ramp ended. And uh, by welding these plates on the outside, it gives them a little bit more strength in that area. Yes, I did grind the welds back flush, but I just think it looks better that way. More of an aesthetic choice. But I'm going to go over how I did it. I've already cut all my material. I got the new center sections cut. I got that plate cut. That is a 3 8 plate. I didn't cut this off of that one, of course, but we'll get to that. But it involved pretty much all these tools. Everything here. 
So my goal is now to clean up. So I'm gonna first off park the wife's car in here because it's gonna snow, and you know, happy wife, happy life. But you know, put away everything I don't need right now because I'm done cutting. Like even that over there, that over there, I might leave out just in case I gotta trim something up. But for the most part, the plasma might just go in a corner. But that pipe needs to come off the floor. The welder needs pushed back. That plate can go back wherever it was. I was going to use it, and then I realized it was way overkill. Um, too thick. But I am actually kind of tickled with that. I'm not going to lie. I'm very tickled with that. I think it looks very astute. But I'll show you how I did that tomorrow. So, um... <laughs> complications may arise this is a little hypertherm 30 I've had it for probably about 10 years and I went last one I did I marked this out and more or less I cut it with the plasma I just went you know cut across here and then down and then, and then I laid my plate in and welded it well while doing that all of a sudden it went and it started leaking air real bad, so I took it apart this morning to figure out what happened. And what I found was, it's not super catastrophic. I mean, I don't think it's going to cost much money, but this little plastic doodad cracked. And you can see the crack right there. One right there. It's cracked in three places, actually. I don't know what happened. I mean, there's no... The filter's not full of garbage or anything. So we're going to give this guy a shot and see if that fixes it. Ooh. Got a runner going down into the threads. That's not good. I think... Well, I, I think, honestly, I think it's just screwed. I'm going to have to get a new one. Anyway, we're going to push this off to the side. Um, but anyway, I'm going to try out my... Quarter band and see if I can cut it with that. Um, I think that'll be actually even a little easier. I'll probably have to dress it up some. Might actually work better. Probably doesn't create as much dust and yeah. as that thing does. But here goes. Here goes nothing. Be ready for a long shot. Not bad. Um, don't know what my camera just did there, but not bad. Um, it's pretty close to what I got with the torch anyway. Maybe just not as wide of a curve, but we'll uh, knock this edge off, flatten this out with the grinder, some and fit our plate up, and see what we got. Well, after all that, there's my fit up. I also forgot to mention uh, the ratchet straps to keep anything from spreading or moving too much. And this one's just in here as a spacer. It's 12 inches on my ramps between each one. And it's 8 inches between each joist. And then something just went past my window. I don't know what that was. Anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is tack this sucker in. Tack it here. Tack it there. Weld it. Clamp it. Flip it. Weld it. Weld it. Weld it. And then I can take the strap off. Take my spacer out. And then I'll start putting 
uh, the next two rungs in, one, two, and then with everything tight, you know, because nothing can really move anywhere, then I'll finish welding all that in, add the gusset, grind it, and then add the other gusset. So, I'm going to try not to skip around much, but watch out, because I'm running out of time to get this thing done. Big snowstorm coming. Got to get these out of the shop. All right, we got that sucker all welded up. Got some heat into her too. You can tell by the lines. But now I'm gonna fit up these. That one's just held in because it's so tight. Which ain't really a bad thing. And then I'll put one here, and then I'm gonna measure, or no, and then I'm gonna weld this out. So we're gonna add this guy, then this guy, weld this out, grind it probably brace it and then add the next guy okay here we go all right the only thing you really missed was me welding in those two and finish welding all that and grinding the piss out of it oh my I ground on that sucker forever but now we're going to add in and I recycled the original one Final piece about yo, once I measure for it. Might have turned my heat down a little bit because it looks like there's a little bit of a gap. But uh, other than that, pretty good. That one's about to get a sister. Woohoo! So, just another note. I'm sorry I left my welder running because I plan on getting right back into it. But whenever I weld this up, this. If you can, just add a little more rigidity, do it right over your seam. So it's actually braced on the inside and it will be braced on the outside as well. Just a thought. All right, Zzz, more zipping to go on. So yes, I'm gonna address it. First off, keyboard commandos. I know that these are ridiculously oversized for the application, but they're what I got and I'm running with it. I mean, they're just handy. They're there. And why am I playing it on the outside and not the inside? Well, the inside is because number one, it's already kind of gapped here. And number two is for aesthetics. So I don't have to grind that weld out on the inside to make it look right because part of this is aesthetics too as is everything So, we got those finished. I know my camera ran out of memory. Uh, my memory card, and I didn't notice it while I was filming last, so I don't know what all you got, but yeah. I welded these plates on. This is just to add a little more bolstering strength here. But I think they'll fit on pretty good. I hope they clear the door, because that was the goal. And look at that. I mean, just that bar straight on there. So nice. Ooh, excuse me. So nice. I'm going to give it a little soak with some fluid film, slide these puppies in there, and put them on. Well, I got an eight foot high door. <laughs> It'll be close. I hope I don't swell up the driveway far enough, but I'm going to pull it forward and we'll see if I uh, achieve my goals. 
Yep, we're not gonna make it. Um, so I had measured before. I backed it in, and the only thing I can conceivably think of as to why my trailer got taller would be that thing. I didn't account for the fact that I straightened the bar out. So that might have caused a little wiggle where these ramps now actually sit more vertical. But the solution is to uh, let a couple links out. So here we go. See there, I let uh, two links out and uh, we're down to, down a foot, a good foot. So I think we can get out now. Minor inconvenience. Well, now you see the wife's car back in the garage. That must mean one thing. Another project is over. But, the ending of one is the beginning of another. And, I don't know if you can see it, but I think my ramps make my trailer look short. I don't know, they're really long. Uh, aesthetically, they look like crap. They're a little bit heavy. I mean, they, they don't look like crap. They don't look right on the trailer. But functionality-wise, they should be great. But getting back to what happened on the way in and out, I was originally going to add 3 feet to each ramp. I only ended up adding 32 inches. Because as I backed in, I thought, whenever I got close to the door, I measured and I thought, well, wow, there's no way if I add 36 inches that that sucker will fit in there. But as I was leaving, I noticed something. As you can see here, the ground stays level, stays level, and then it swells up to there and then goes out. And during that swell, whenever the ramp doors got close to the garage door, focus, focus. Anyway, the, the back end of the truck dipped down, which caused, or went up, which caused the back end of the trailer to go down because as the truck goes up the trailer goes down so I think it might have cleared but I'll just have to keep that in mind from now on I'm not going to go back through and try to chop you know four more inches out of the ramps that would just be way stupid but I got what I wanted I got what I thought I wanted whether or not it's what I actually wanted we'll have to see And I know I said about doing the latch for the chain and whatnot, but unfortunately there's a snowstorm coming and I just ran out of time. So, as my mill spec Coleman lantern burns away, that's the end of this day. It'll go out eventually.